what does this airplane, this airplane, and this airplane all have in common? We're going to tell you in Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machette. We have a really exciting episode. These airplanes are man bombers from three different eras, World War II, the Cold War, and today. And what's really exciting is this is being posted uh, the weekend after the rollout of a brand new airplane that happened on Friday, December 2nd, uh, 2022 in Palmdale, California. The Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider, the newest military airplane and possibly the last man bomber in history. The airplane is named Raider in honor of the Doolittle Raiders in World War II that flew B-25s. So I thought we would uh, have an overview of US Air Force bombers by the numbers to celebrate the new airplane. And we're gonna talk about that in more detail and show you some photos as well. So let's start at the beginning. The Martin MB-1, 1918, just after World War II, a twin engine monster airplane uh, in those days. And when you talk about open cockpit, I don't know about you, but I don't see any windshields on this airplane and the guys are flying without helmets. So uh, I'm sure that must've been a thrill, but here it is over Washington, DC. The airplane flew about hundred miles an hour, uh, carried about a thousand pounds of payload and uh, had a range of only 400 miles. Uh, it was designed by uh, and built by the Glen L. Martin Company. Uh, Mr. Martin is in the center of the photo holding the model that you see there, the framework of the fuselage. And on the left of the photo, uh, the gentleman uh, with the mustache is a young uh, graduate of MIT, aeronautical engineer who worked for Martin. And his name is Donald Douglas. Ten years later, we had airplanes like this, the Curtis B-2 and the Keystone B-4. And these were uh, typical of the aircraft uh, bomber configurations of that day, twin engine biplanes, again, about 100 miles an hour, uh, 1,000 pound payload. And uh, the breakthrough was this airplane from Martin, the B-10 in 1932. Now you had an all metal monoplane with uh, two powerful engines, fully enclosed cockpits, uh, this was a 200 mile an hour airplane, carried a 2000 pound payload and had a range of 1200 miles. So this was really a new paradigm in bomber design and this kind of set the stage for everything that came later. But you'll notice it's a fairly small airplane. So the army put out a uh, competition for a large four engine bomber. And this is Boeing's answer, the XB-15. This was a very significant airplane. It was the largest airplane built at that time. Uh, it was one of the first to ever have a flight engineer uh, to assist the pilot and co-pilot with all the airplane systems and power plants. Uh, it was also significant because the wing design was used for the Boeing 314 flying boat at top and other components and uh, construction methodology was used for the pressurized 307 uh, straddle liner at uh, the bottom, world's first pressurized airliner. But this was the thoroughbred that resulted from the uh, initial designs, the B-17 Flying Fortress, legendary bomber of World War II. And so let's take a look at, uh, from this era forward, uh, bombers by the numbers. Uh, Douglas had uh, a pair of uh, bombers that were developed essentially from the DC-2 and the DC-3, although they were much more advanced airplanes, uh, the Douglas B-18 Bolo and the B-23 Dragon. And in 1939, they had the XB-19 Hemisphere Bomber, uh, which was uh, quite an impressive airplane and now the new largest airplane at that time, but it was too much too soon. And uh, uh, it just, it was not a successful machine, but it did pave the way for future Douglas aircraft. The DB-7, which evolved into the A-20 uh, Havoc, uh, twin engine uh, bomber designed by the, uh, Ted Smith of uh, Aero Commander fame in later years. Consolidated had the B-24 Liberator, and North American had the B-25 Mitchell, and this is in a rendering by uh, the great Craig Kadera, showing the launch of the Doolittle Raid, the ruptured duck, Ted Lawson's airplane, and then uh, Craig also painted the B-26 Marauder from Martin, and this is interesting, there were actually two B-26s in a sense, uh, Douglas had the A-26 Invader, 
and that became the B-26 when the uh, Martin Marauder was taken out of inventory. And then it became, again, the A-26 when uh, bomber aircraft were not allowed in certain areas. So they uh, went back to the original designation. The North American XB-28 was essentially a larger, more powerful and pressurized uh, version of the B-25 seen here at what is now LAX in uh, Los Angeles. At the end of the war, the Boeing B-29 and the consolidated B-32 were the last two airplanes to see action in World War II. And of course the B-29 uh, carried the uh, atomic weapons uh, uh, used to end the war with Japan. We have some experimental bombers and I have two examples of uh, experimental designs that began as uh, <clears throat> piston powered contra rotating prop powered uh, aircraft and were then converted using the same airframes to pure jet. The first is the Northrop XB-35 flying wing converted into the YB-49. And then we have the Douglas XB-42 Mixmaster, <clears throat> which was uh, kind of a play on words for the contra rotating prop looking like the kitchen appliance. And then that became the Douglas XB-43 Jetmaster, the United States first jet bomber, although it never was operational. And then we have the XB-36 Peacemaker, the beginning of the B-36 family, uh, which was really the uh, uh, just a tremendous uh, deterrent weapon during the Cold War. And uh, this was a piston powered aircraft in the beginning, and then they added four jet engines to it for boosted performance. So that's where the term uh, six turning and four burning came from. But the uh, B-36 was a formidable weapon and again, never uh, used, never fired a shot in anger as they used to say, which means it did its job very well. This brings us to March of 1946, the creation of the Strategic Air Command. At that time, it was still the US Army Air Forces. The uh, US Air Force was uh, a year and a half later. And this is the first jet bomber of the Strategic Air Command or SAC. North American's B-45 Tornado. Very successful design, also adapted for photo recon. Beautiful photo of it here over the Mojave Desert. Two more experimental designs in the quest for a really high performance uh, jet bomber, and that was Consolidated's uh, XB-46 and Martin's XB-48. Uh, the B-48 was the last airplane that Martin built. And uh, here we have the winner of that competition, the Boeing B-47 Stratojet, uh, in the words of Boeing test pilot Tex Johnston, one of, if not the most significant jet airplane of the 20th century, because it featured a high aspect ratio laminar swept wing, uh, potted turbojet engines, and new construction methods that led to uh, the first jet airliners, the Boeing 707 uh, being the pioneer, and literally all the airplanes that came after that, uh, even in use today. Uh, kind of a throwback, a B-29 with a modified uh, tail, taller uh, vertical fin, and the R-3350s were uh, replaced by Pratt & Whitney uh, R-4360s, uh, and this became uh, quite a, a good airplane for the Air Force at that time period in the late 40s, early 50s. It was used as a tanker as well. The Martin XB-51 Panther uh, Trijet, uh, unconventional configuration, uh, General Chuck Yeager told me he considered this airplane one of the best he ever flew. Uh, it was loved by all the pilots that flew it, did not go into production, uh, and I'll show you what, uh, what Martin did build in a moment. But here's the machine that really uh, set the stage for uh, jet bombers in the Cold War, the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress. We're going to talk a little more in detail on this airplane uh, later in the program. Now, when it came to the Martin B-57, this is the machine that did go into production. And uh, it's a uh, derivation of the British Canberra. And I looked at this photo and it's like, where have I seen this before? Oh, yes. Ravel's cover. You didn't think I was going to do a program without a model cover, did you? The world's first Mach 2 bomber, the uh, beautiful B-58 Hustler, one of the most aesthetically beautiful airplanes ever built. And uh, here's a take on the B-36 with swept wings and uh, potted J-57s. Uh, it just didn't have the performance uh, anywhere close to the B-52. And so uh, they built two prototypes and that was it. But uh, the YB-60 was Converse attempt at a jet bomber. 
Then there were these two, the Douglas B-66 Destroyer, uh, also adapted as a photo recon airplane, the RB-66, and of course, the Lockheed B-69. You never heard of a B-69? Me neither. It was the RB-69A uh, derivation of the Neptune. Lockheed built five of these airplanes for the Air Force, used for uh, surveillance and electronic intercept in uh, denied territory at the beginning of the Cold War. So having said all these numbers, what, where did all the other numbers go? What's a B-61 or a B-65 or a B-78? Is this for real? Yes, it is. These were the missiles. And the initial strategic missiles had bomber designations. They were later changed. But let's go through and uh, take a look. The B-61 Matador, B-62 Snark, B-63 Rascal, B-64 Navajo, B-65 Atlas, B-68 Titan. And here's an airplane, the XB-70. Now, this is ironic because the B-70, of course, never went into production. It was replaced by, you guessed it, ICBMs. But let's continue on. The B-75 Thor, the B-76 Mace, and uh, the B-78 uh, Jupiter missile, which was the first uh, military missile to actually carry a nuclear warhead. And this later became uh, the, the, the basis for the Jupiter C, which boosted uh, Alan Shepard into space uh, in the Mercury capsule, the first American into space. But uh, uh, the numbers actually went up to 92. So the B for bomber, as in B-62 SNARK, was actually replaced by SM for strategic missile. And so the SNARK was the SM-62. Now we come to the modern bomber, and here's where the numbers reverted back to the beginning, much like the fighters and transports. Uh, the Rockwell International B-1, beautiful airplane, uh, variable geometry aircraft. And then uh, there's the real McCoy. So you can see art imitates life. Uh, the B-1A uh, was uh, canceled under the Carter administration. And then the B-1B was resurrected in the Reagan administration and is still serving today. Also serving the Northrop B-2 Spirit, the first stealth bomber. Uh, and this was an interesting airplane. Oh, you don't recognize the shape? How about that? That's a little more like it. So the Strategic Air Command went from 1946 to 1992. It was replaced by the United States Strategic Command. You'll notice the same uh, you know, metal gloved fist with the lightning bolts and the uh, olive branch. Uh, but now we're talking about space and uh, Earth uh, as seen from space, so it's a little different spin. But uh, these two airplanes were the backbone of the Strategic Command and will be retired, both the B-1 and the B-2. Uh, the B-1, 100 were built. There are about uh, 45 still in service. Uh, the rest are all at Davis Monthan in the Boneyard. And the B-2 uh, is now 30 years old, if you can believe that. And is a great airplane uh, in its own, but is now requiring a fair amount of maintenance. And so uh, this will be replaced by the new kid, the B-21. And so America's bomber force will be uh, uh, consist of the B-21 Raider, as you see here in a rendering. And the, wait a minute, the B-52? This airplane has been flying for 70 years. But yes, lo and behold, this will be our bomber force, conventional airplane and the uh, Raider capable of conventional and nuclear weapons as well. Well, let's take a look at the 52. Let's pay tribute to this amazing design. Uh, first flew April 15th, 1952. And uh, you can see the different uh, cockpit canopy arrangement, the tandem uh, canopy, and then the Air Force insisted on a side-by-side -side for better crew integration. Tex Johnston made the first flight of this airplane. And I should uh, qualify that B-52 is also nuclear capable. But um, it served as a, a deterrent aircraft during the Cold War, uh, as seen above. And then uh, the D models flew in uh, Vietnam, uh, dropping conventional weapons, as seen below, used in uh, Operation Arc Light. The B-52 uh, early models, uh, uh, B uh, models served as uh, motherships for the X-15 rocket plane and the lifting bodies, which were the link between the X-15 and the space shuttle. 
And this is the uh, B50, B52H, the current model. Again, there are about 48 of them in service out of the uh, 500 plus that were built. So the B-52 first flew in 1952 and could go quite some time. They're going to be re-engined uh, with new, more efficient, uh, more powerful uh, uh, turbofans, and we'll have new cockpit and new uh, onboard weapon systems. And it'll be a, an airplane that will soldier on for at least another 20 years. It's conceivable that the B-52 will be the first military airplane to be operational for close to 100 years. And I will tell you that uh, the grand, the great grandchildren of the original pilots are, are now flying this airplane, both uh, grandsons and granddaughters. So we went from the Martin MB1 to the B21 in a little over 100 years, 104 to be exact. And this is the first officially released uh, US Air Force photo of the B21. And this raises a question, where did all those other numbers go? We were at B1 and B2. Technically, shouldn't this be the B3? Well, let's take a look. I've heard it said that the B, it's really the B2.1 in the digital uh, parlance, or it's a B21 for a 21st century bomber. But uh, my inside sources at Northrop tell me that if you look at this, what's really happening is the two plus one equals a B3. You decide. So there you have it, an overview of the manned bomber programs through history and a look at the new B-21 Raider. Special thanks to the folks and the entities that make these uh, presentations possible. My dear friend, Tony Landis, the US Air Force Documentary Art Program and the Wings and Air Power Historical Archive. Thank you for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you haven't subscribed, we'd love having you on board and please do hit the like button on the way out. And as always, until next time, take care.